ex-Muslim poses as an Orthodox Jew to marry a Jewish woman and sparks FBI probe. So this is going to go in a, this is going to go in so many different directions. Uh, Elia, uh, how, how, Elia Hawila, a 23-year-old Lebanese man, and Sally, a Syrian Jew from New York, were recently married in August. Elia's real name is Ali Hassan Hawila. Uh, he was born and raised as Muslim with no Jewish heritage. However, he convinced Sally that he is an ortho- ultra-Orthodox Jew. He told Sally that he is estranged from his family in Lebanon and associated with an ultra-Orthodox association in Texas for many years. Sally eventually discovered a Lebanese passport with an Arabic name and immediately notified her family. Her brother visited their apartment and found a Palestinian passport bearing a different Muslim name. At that point, Huila tried to uh, explain that he was an NSA agent on a mission. Sally's parents and friends subsequently contacted the FBI, initiating an investigation. Well, the FBI is investigating whether Elia's claims of being an NSA agent are valid or not, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Israeli consulate in New York are also investigating the possibility of Hawilia entering the country illegally. Wait, okay. Can you... (laughs) (laughs) What? I don't... um, This has... Yeah, some people in the land chat were asking for charts and like, you have to draw this Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... (laughs) Um, basically, you know, he presented a certain story to this woman that he married and then it didn't hold up. And so I'm going to explain it from our understanding of what actually happened. So I watched an interview with him on Israeli television where he was speaking in English and he talked about his story or what he claims to be is his truthful story. And so he claims that he grew up in Lebanon, uh, in a Shia Muslim family. And that he never felt religious. He never felt like a Muslim. And then one day he discovered the um, Tanakh, the the Jewish Old Testament. And he felt like this is something he connected to. He felt deeply connected and compelled towards Judaism. And people in his community started to find out that he identified as Jewish. And they would discriminate against him, send him death threats, um, and do Wait, nasty while living things. where while living in... in lebanon okay 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 and so he immigrated to america at some point and when he immigrated to america that's when he started to fraudulently paint himself as someone who was authentically ethnically jewish and hmm. he went to yeshiva he can speak he can speak fr- oh, God damn. he can speak fluent hebrew I'm but like it's you. a kind of Hebrew that is like other speakers can mm-hmm. tell that you learned that Hebrew in a yeshiva based on the way you mm-hmm. talk. Mm-hmm. And he became fully integrated into the ultra Orthodox community because this is something like based on the way he's talking, I almost feel bad for him. Like he really seemed to, this is some like a deeply held belief of his. Um, okay. But the problem was that he fraudulently painted himself as someone who's ethnically Jewish and he technically has not undergone the formal religious traditions to be called a Jew when you're in a really formal way. Um, there was so all of per- this is not criminal yet, right? Yes. Well, where it becomes interesting is when his story suddenly started to be revealed. There were inconsistencies. And when questioned, he was like, uh, I'm an eminent MSA agent. And he, he presented them some sort of documentation that was supposedly Mm. claiming that he was an NSA agent. So now, but an NSA agent would never tell anybody. Huh? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you would, but an agent wouldn't ever tell anybody that they're an agent. No. I mean, presumably. <laughs> wouldn't presumably. That be the first, wouldn't that be the, your first clue that he's not an agent, given that he's telling you that he's an agent? Yeah, but the big problem is now that he did make that claim, that he went so far as to present falsified documentation to back up that claim. And mm-hmm. now there are suddenly three passports associated with him. One of these passports potentially um, 
signifying that he was actually a Palestinian living in Lebanon, then who then came to the United States. And um, so now he's wow. in big trouble. His wife has been taken away from him. They've, uh, I don't know if they're formally separated, but she's like no longer with him. Um, she's somewhere else to be like kept safe. And, um, now, now he's in trouble with the federal authorities and they're even investigating if he's in the country legally. Um, it's interesting because when this was, um, reported in other news media, they said that this is a Muslim man pretending to be Jewish. But if you read through his story and actually listen to him, like I wanted, our news editor suggested that we call him an ex-Muslim because I do get the sense that this is something that he actually really has left Islam, that he's very sincere in his Jewish faith. And he actually has a GoFundMe so he can go do his what? conversion in Israel. Um, and <laughs> I feel I, if his story that he now has come forward and say, like, apparently when the FBI showed up, he's like, I give you full permission to spy on everything I have. Like, I'm not affiliated with every, anyone. Like, mm. and he was on Israeli television, like crying because he's like, they took away my wife. Like if, you know, she might not even want to be with me because of what I did, but like, they took away the love of my life, you know? Right, so right. I did really like, I had to feel bad for him in that sense. Um, but in a so lot of ways, liked... this sounds like a guy who's, you know, he's 23 and he kind of got in over his head. Wow. He's 23. Okay. So the lies are that he was not he, he told them that he was born jew but he didn't tell them that he was converted to judaism right yeah and technically he hadn't completed that actual form conversion, of conversion yet conversion as well and also that <clears throat> where did he say he was from before Lebanon. they found no but he said when his wife discovered his lebanese passport oh the, the oh okay so the, they knew he was from lebanon but the passport had an had Arabic a muslim name, name. As, yeah instead of a jewish name okay cool um and and then the, even he was even though he had a lebanese passport he was originally from palestine well there's yeah. reporting around a third palestinian passport being somewhere wow. in the picture but the, where okay. exactly that fits in isn't clear yet okay now it makes sense to me expect except the part that says he had to lie about being an agent why would he lie about being an agent what was the purpose of that he probably panicked he, he just wanted to explain why he had a different passport. Yeah, like, why do you have a fake name? What? Why fake. do you have fake government oh. documentation? What is this? What is this, like, dual identity? What's going on here? Mm. I'm a double agent. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, it sounds like a kid that just went, yeah, okay. Um, interesting. It is funny. Yeah, but it, it's funny that you would assume, like, let me prove to you that I'm an agent. And then they say agent, like, Show me the <laughs> when in history have you had like somebody trying to tell civilians, right? Like, here's the documents that I'm I'm blowing my up my cover for love, and here are the documents. Here's the proof. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. You're not a very good. You're not you're not a very good agent if you go out of your way trying to prove that you're an agent. But yeah, go. On. You, 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 you have <laughs> usually, a usually it's the opposite. Usually, your job is to do the opposite. But go. On, yeah, 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 yeah. Not to produce the documentation to prove. <laughs> um, and it, it made me sad because I saw one is uh, commentator on Israeli TV talking about how in different um, ultra orthodox communities, like him not being technically Jewish, like given that he have, like actually had done the proper conversions ahead of time, like him not being ethnically Jewish would have possibly been not that much of an issue for maybe like an Ashkenazi or Mizrahi background, but because they're Syrian Sephardic Jews, apparently they are much stricter about someone being actually ethnically Jewish. And so that is a way larger violation than it would possibly be for other communities. Um, mm. So if that's the case, it, and this man is sincere, I feel bad for him because he was crying on TV over his wife. Like, it made, <laughs> I don't, it made, it, it hurt, it hurt my heart. Oh, but, okay, <laughs> respond to D. Uh, D is saying, what did they do with her? Took her away. I'm like, they were living together as a married couple and they just took her out of that household. I like it how the word like took her away doesn't make sense to people who are not born in religious families. 
So like, <laughs> who took her away? <laughs> like, how can you take a woman away? Like, it's not like it's, she's not like a <laughs> she's not like a car, but I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> it's a it's a conservative. <laughs> like, I like it's a foreign like to to people who I don't know to people who might not be like in conservative household. It's just like a I, I assume it's a foreign concept that you could just take somebody away as if like they have no agency. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, if you're a woman in a conservative family, you don't have agency. People just take you away. Like, whoop, it, it's not your wife anymore. It's ours now. Yeah. You know, it's basically treating them like property. It's really, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Murtad Skeptic is doing the uh, movie expi <laughs> exposition. <laughs> like, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this mess. Let's rewind. <laughs> <laughs> like it's oh, a yeah. freaking wild Ryan Reynolds movie. <laughs> Oh man, Ghost Bunny is saying the wife got repossessed. Oh. <laughs> and Chuvo is saying, wait, where did it go? True love is greater than the NSA. Mm. That's true. Facts. All right, so let's read this while I get the next news. Megumum is saying, I don't know what the woman would think now, but the man should have been honest with her. He could have asked her to help to convert to Judaism before marriage. Problem solved. Yes. And he even says, like, this is my fault. I should, like the guilt of, um, you know, not being honest with people like did, you know, eat away at me. Um, or maybe he like really, I can't remember exactly how they met. Um, but maybe he knew that her community was more strict about someone being ethnically Jewish. And that's what motivated him to go this route. I don't in know. In his, def in his defense, um, he's 23. So, and yeah, also this was love. This is another version of love. This was actually, no, no, right. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below